What's up, guys? Jay? More than after kill? And I'm back on Borderlands 2! And if you've been following along the last past few weeks, we've been taking a retrospective look back at the Borderlands series and highlighting some of the more significant moments and events that have come to shape the Borderlands franchise and contribute to its overall decline and inevitable downfall. And today, I wanted to take a look back at Tiny Tina's assault on Dragon's Keep. Arguably, one of the most popular pieces of content in the franchise. Rivaling fan favorites such as General Nox's Armory and the Claptastic Voyage as one of the best pieces of DLC content that Gearbox has released for Borderlands. Ever. However, most people are surprised to find out that I, mind you, this is my own opinion, am not as fond of this DLC as most Borderlands fans are. And I realize that I'm in the very extreme minority in this opinion. Because while most fans have memories of a fantastical retelling of the Borderlands 2 main campaign, having our first introduction to Butt Stallion and an extremely emotional payoff to the campaign from a character that previously hadn't really shown the capability to feel beyond surface emotions. But for me, somebody that's been around since the beginning of Borderlands 2, Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon's Keep was just the first time that Gearbox yanked the carpet out from underneath my feet. What went from an amazing initial DLC experience over time slowly turned into sour grapes. When you realize that this DLC was bookended by Gearbox teasing the Moonbase DLC that everyone in the community was clamoring for since launch. With Handsome Jack dead, Hyperion missing leadership from its CEO, and the giant Hyperion H still hanging in the sky, fans of the series took to social media and Gearbox's own forums to ask if we're ever going up to Helios and remove the last lingering reminder of Hyperion. From the skybox once and for all. And this was teased pre-release with Gearbox releasing a three-minute mini-movie of Brick and Tina captured by Hyperion, using the power of fantasy to break free and taking a Hyperion engineer hostage. It's siren time. Uh-oh. <laughs> the same hostage that's being tortured and interrogated by the Borderlands 2 Vault Hunters while the Assault on Dragon's Keep DLC is taking place. While our Vault Hunting buddies beat the Slamma Jam out of that Hyperion informant downstairs, I thought we could play a game. The same hostage that gives up the codes to Helios at the end of the DLC. Hey guys, that spy just coughed up the access codes to the Hyperion moon base. Anybody feel like blowing up a space station? Hell yes I do! And then nothing. Radio silence. That storyline just kinda ends there. And in the meantime, Gearbox was releasing the Headhunter packs, which seemed like they were using these bite-sized DLCs 
to hold the community over until they could finish the Moonbase DLC. During which Gearbox decided, you know what would be cool? If, if we took that idea, right? And then we split it up into two games that no one asked for, the pre-sequel and Tales from the Borderlands, and we try to profit twice from the same idea. Pretty much the same thing that Gearbox would go on to do with 2K Australia and Luxie's Space Adventure DLC. Being split up into the Commander Lilith DLC and the Handsome Jackpot. All while robbing the fan base from more Borderlands 2 content. Losing a large portion of that fan base when instead of delivering the content that they teased for the game that these players love and then mishandling the game that they released in its place. And having the Volt Hunters torture a Hyperion engineer for access codes. Access codes that they never do anything with. Not even in Tales from the Borderlands. <laughs> Instead, Gearbox opting to pay off the promise of Assault in Helios in a point-and-click story-based game with no looting and no shooting. So, my name is Jay. More than after kill, I want to thank you guys for watching. Make sure you guys rate, comment, subscribe. If you leave thumbs up on the video, I'd highly appreciate it because it gives motivation to make more videos for y'all motherfuckers that watch. My motherfucking vigils. Did you kind of forget all about the Moonbase DLC that Gearbox teased during Dragon's Keep pre-release and at the end of the DLC? Were you all swept up in emotions of Tiny Tina coming to the realization that Roland is dead and never coming back? That you totally forgot that the Volt Hunters were downstairs Kicking the ever-living shit out of somebody for no reason at all. <laughs> what do you think Borderlands 2's life cycle would have looked like if instead of releasing the pre-sequel, they released a large-scale DLC, Assault and Helios, instead? Tell me in the comment section down below. My name's Jay. More than I have to kill. Thanks for watching. And I'm going to see y'all motherfuckers. Later.